In this episode of The Weekend Experience, we're off to Boca Grande, Florida. Located on Gasparilla Island, it's roughly two hours south of Tampa on the Gulf Coast. Here we are at the only bridge onto the island. Surprise, surprise, it has a toll booth, and no Sun Pass Lane at that. Did I mention that it's also a swing bridge? That's basically a drawbridge, but the whole middle of the bridge swings out horizontally. We caught it at just the wrong time and we'll have to wait a few minutes for the boats to come through. Finally, we're crossing the bridge to get onto the island. It really feels like we're in the Keys right now, as the water has that same blue color. We'll consider this a warm-up trip for our time in the Keys later this year. It's days like this that make you want to buy a boat. We'll have to rely on friends and family for now. That may be for the best though. It's almost always better to know someone with a boat than to own one yourself. Boca Grande was originally known for being a phosphate transshipment point due to the naturally deep passes surrounding the island. The pass on the south side is one of the deepest natural inlets in Florida. That business faded over time as the rail lines found it more convenient to load ships in the port of Tampa. By the 1970s, the phosphate business that had put the island on the map was virtually gone. The tourism business was thriving, though. Back in the day, there weren't that many places like Boca Grande that were easily accessible via the railroad. Many notable families like the Bushes of Presidential fame and Audrey Hepburn have called it home seasonally. You can see the beginning of the bike paths now that we're on the island. We're still a couple of miles from town, but they're serious about bikes and golf carts here. One of the big reasons for this is that there aren't any gas stations on the island. Residents prefer to get around by golf cart or by bike. There's actually an ordinance allowing golf carts on all but two of the roads. We've reached the downtown area, so I think it's time to find a place to park. Most people like to park at one of the beaches, but we brought our bikes. We'll make the downtown area our home base for the day. So let's break out the bikes and explore the island. We haven't gone but a couple hundred feet and we've found the first beach access. Not bad, not bad at all. Let's keep heading down the island and see what else is around. It looks like many of the side streets have beach access. I'm not sure if this is public street parking or if it's just for the homes on the street. Not a bad place to live, I'm sure. Let's see what else is around. That's a cool looking lighthouse. It looks like there's a beach access here too. Let's stop and check it out. Bike parking is right up front. The park has caught on to our biking ways though. It's two dollars to park per bike, but that's good throughout the island. I'm not sure how they'd know if you didn't pay though. It's not like you can put the tag on the dash like you do in a car. It looks like another great beach. It really doesn't look that crowded on the beach itself, but cars were circling in the parking lot. If you show up after 10 a.m. like we do, then it's best to take bikes. Let's go check out that lighthouse while we're here. On a side note, I'm not sure what the deal is with that giant plant. It kind of looks like a giant broccoli or something. Okay, let's get back to the lighthouse. It was originally built in 1881 as a lighthouse in Lewis, Delaware, where it served until it was decommissioned in 1919 due to shoreline changes. At that point, it was taken apart and shipped down south to Florida. It took until 1927 to secure the funding needed to have it installed where you see it today. It looks really narrow. Narrow enough that I'm wondering if there's really a spiral staircase inside or just a ladder. I'm 
I guess they must have rebuilt the door during the renovations. Let's head down to the south end of the island. You can see a lot of resorts all along the way there. And here we are, the southernmost beach on the island. It looks like the wonderful deep shipping channel isn't the best for swimming. From what the signs say, it's quite easy to get swept out to sea. If you're into fishing though, this is supposed to be one of the best spots for tarpon in the world. Apparently there are two lighthouses on the island. This one was built in 1890 and was the primary lighthouse for the channel. The one we saw earlier was just a range light. The lighthouse is a museum, but it looks like it isn't open during the ongoing pandemic. Let's find the next beach access heading back up the island. I think this one will do nicely. Let's go find a place to park ourselves. Here we are, another winter day in Florida at the beach. 80 degrees out with a hot sun and a cool breeze. The water doesn't look that cold. It's time to head in for a swim. The water is cool and the sun is hot. We could stay out here all day. It's getting to be mid-afternoon though, so perhaps we should go find something for lunch. Welcome to the Loose Caboose, located in Boca Grande's historic train depot. A couple of cold beverages and a snack, and it's time to explore the downtown area. The downtown isn't as big as I expected, but it has something for everyone. Several restaurants and bars, as well as gift shops. There's an outfitter shop as well as some art galleries and beachwear shops. It looks like the fire station is doing some business today. I hope everyone's all right. With that, it's time to grab our bikes from the loose caboose and head out. And like that, another weekend is finished. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you here next time on The Weekend Experience. Thanks for watching the video today. If you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate it if you gave me a like and a subscribe. I appreciate it. Thanks.